President Obama has largely stayed out of Democratic primary races. Now, uh, back during the 2016 election, he kind of uh, did that nominally, but he dropped so many hints that he was for Hillary Clinton and not Bernie Sanders. Um, again, he always leaves himself enough wiggle room and plausible deniability where if you are direct with him and straightforward with him and, and say, wait, are you for Hillary? He'd say, no, 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 I'm, I'm staying neutral. So I, I don't know what you mean. I'm going to let the, the voters have their say. But no, he dropped a lot of hints about how, you know, hey, this, we're not building a system from scratch. And that's the main critique of Bernie Sanders is, oh, he's so pie in the sky and he's not realistic. And, um, you know, having been in here for so many years as president, uh, I know what's possible and I know what's not possible. And really, I think we need to be pragmatic about how the country moves forward. So that's all, you know, that's all coded talk for status quo is great. Uh, Hillary Clinton is the exact kind of person uh, that I would want to take over because uh, she resembles my ideology and my philosophy a lot more. Namely, neoliberalism, centrism, corporatism, you know, uh, you sprinkle in a, a few things that are positive while largely keeping everything exactly the same. So it, Obama already has dropped hints that despite some of the good things he did, he's still a negative force. I mean, uh, call it out for what it is. And now... Since he's out of office, the first thing he did, if you remember, is did a four, I think it was $400,000 speech to Wall Street. So he went away for a while, and then the first you hear of him is he's getting paid on Wall Street. And this is the way that this stuff works, guys. You know, he, he took a tremendous amount of money, by the way, from Goldman Sachs, from all these different Wall Street firms, uh, and the Democrats, unfortunately, are very similar to the Republicans in that... When you look at their donors, it's for-profit health insurance companies, big pharma, you know, you have the military industrial complex in there, Raytheon, Boeing, Honeywell. So now Obama, after again going into hiding for a while, has come back out in the public and guess what he did? Endorsed Dianne Feinstein. So Dianne Feinstein has a couple primary challengers, and um, Obama wants to make sure that nobody to the left of Feinstein gets elected. Now, I need you, need you to understand that Dianne Feinstein is the most conservative of the options in the primary in California. Now, there's Kevin DeLeon. Kevin DeLeon is nominally to the left of Dianne Feinstein, probably in reality to the left of Dianne Feinstein too, although, uh, you know, his progressive credentials are, very, are really not impressive when push comes to shove. So you have him, Obama goes, no, I'm going to stick with Dianne Feinstein. Um, I believe you have David Hildebrand, who does have some decent uh, progressive credentials. But you also have who? Allison Hartson. What she's been doing in, you know, the past five years or so is working to get money out of politics. That's been what she's, she's done full time. She was a teacher before that. So we're talking about a working person who's dedicated herself to ending corruption in the United States, who's a progressive lion, and Obama comes out of hiding to endorse the status quo, the establishment. For those of you who don't know, Dianne Feinstein, there's genuinely a question as to whether or not Dianne Feinstein is more conservative than Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin is the guy who every Democrat, even other corporate Democrats, look at like, wow, that guy's too corporate, and that guy's too much of a blue dog Democrat. I mean, this is a guy who votes for the majority of Donald Trump's cabinet picks, he supports deregulation across the board. He's basically as bad as it gets. He's a, a Democrat in name only, and he thinks that in order to get reelected in West Virginia, he has to be as right-wing as possible, which is totally total bullshit. That's not true. 
Um, but that's his calculation. Well, Dianne Feinstein in California, which is one of the most left-wing states in the country, she has been voting in a very similar way to Joe Manchin. So for those of you who don't know, she's against Medicare for All. 80% of the Democratic Party is for Medicare for All. She's against it. 61% of the country is now for Medicare for All. More Republicans are for Medicare for All than against Medicare for All. And Dianne Feinstein says, no, I'm going to be with the insurance companies. Wow. She's also swimming in uh, corporate money. She, like Nancy Pelosi, views that as a badge of honor. Nancy Pelosi always brags, I'm the number one fundraiser for the Democrats. Now, she's not saying I'm the number one fundraiser, and look at that, I did $27 at a time like Bernie Sanders. I'm raising money from waiters and waitresses and accountants and construction workers. No. She raises money from corporations and wealthy donors, and she's bragging about it. That's what Nancy Pelosi does. Dianne Feinstein, same goddamn thing. That's where she gets her money from. A lot of people don't know this about Dianne Feinstein. She was for CAFTA. She was also for uh, permanent normal trade relations with China, which, by the way, is worse than NAFTA. We often talk about how bad NAFTA is. It is. But permanent normal trade relations with China was the worst of the worst because that led to millions of factory jobs in the U.S. being outsourced. Well, Dianne Feinstein doesn't give a shit. She doesn't care about working class people who are just trying to earn a, a decent living and put food on the table. She was for almost every trade deal that outsourced jobs. And Obama thinks, wonderful! Remember when Obama pretended to be against NAFTA when he uh, was on the campaign trail in 2008? <laughs> wow, that's adorable. He signed a few trade deals also himself. And, he, and obviously he was pushing for TPP like nobody's business. Uh, you also have Dianne Feinstein against the estate tax. She voted for the Patriot Act. There's no more protection from unreasonable search and seizure in this country. You can thank Dianne Feinstein. The NSA is collecting everybody's metadata. You can thank Dianne Feinstein. She doesn't believe in civil liberties. She doesn't believe in the Constitution. And of course, she voted for an illegal offensive war that killed a minimum 200,000 civilians. And oh yeah, torture happened also. She voted for the Iraq War. So Obama, who pretended to be... Mr. Progressive Lion, whenever he campaigns, that's what he would do. He would act like, oh, no, 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 I'm populist left. He was acting like he was Bernie Sanders in some ways. Well, he governed as a centrist, corporatist, neoliberal. That's how he governed. And now, since leaving office, doing $400,000 speeches with Wall Street and endorsing the most conservative, one of the most conservative Democratic senators in the country. So I just need everybody to understand uh, what Obama is. Listen, we're fair-minded, so am I going to give Obama credit when he does something that's positive? Yes. Yes, I, there's, there's... I have no problem doing that. And for those of you who haven't seen my segment going doing the report card of Obama's administration, I highly recommend checking that out. It's I think it's over an hour... And I go through all the ups and downs of Obama's time in office, all of the good policies, all the bad policies. So I really go into detail about what he was right about and what he was wrong about. But here's what's not in dispute. He's not on the populist left. He doesn't believe in social democracy. He doesn't believe in democratic socialism. He believes in the status quo. He believes in corporatism and neoliberalism. And if you can look at somebody like Dianne Feinstein, who has a horrendous voting record, and you can endorse her when you have every, every other person in the race is better than her, well, then that shows us your true colors. You were never for change. He, his whole thing was change, change, change. This is change? Endor endorsing an 80-some-odd-year-old senator who's been in office? Since 1892, that's change. That is literally the opposite of change. So, uh, he, he's proven yet again. He's not what he said he was. Listen. This article, by the way, doesn't even bring up Hildebrand or Allison Hartson. They don't, e don't even bring, the, bring them up. 
they just assert like, oh, Kevin DeLeon is the uh, is the the best fighting chance any of the other candidates have. Like, he's the best option in terms of he's the most viable option. What are they basing that on? Nothing. Nothing. It's based on nothing. In fact, we talked about how going back a few months, you look at the fundraising numbers. Allison Hartson outraised uh, Kevin DeLeon, also outraised Diane Feinstein. But they don't. The polls have excluded her. Isn't that crazy? She's raising more money from small donors. Uh, circumventing corporate media, she's gaining more traction. But the, the polls are like, yeah, we're not going to pay attention to her. And every single article written in an establishment outlet doesn't even mention her. So there is a concerted effort, everybody. See, they take Kevin DeLeon and they'll add him in the articles because, guess what? He's the second most establishment of the choices. All of the actual anti-establishment choices, they don't get any play. All the people who are unapologetically for Medicare for All, and free college, and a living wage, and ending the wars, and ending the drug war, and a new New Deal, legalizing marijuana, uh, all of those candidates, shh, they don't even exist to corporate media. They don't even exist to the status quo. So this is how they try to win the political revolution. You know, and I mentioned this a long time ago. Our biggest enemy is not negative press. It's no press. That's our biggest enemy. Because... Once you get our name out there, people will look and go, what are these people actually about? And then they'll like us. But if they just don't talk about us ever, meaning actual left-wing candidates, well, then people are indifferent and people don't know about you. They don't know anything. So how are they going to vote for you? They don't know about you. So that's why we need word of mouth to try to circumvent this broken system. Because, listen, all we have is each other and the internet. That's it. That's all we have. And of course, they're trying to crack down on the internet means of communication as much as possible. That's why Facebook is now filtering the news and, you know, deprioritizing things that they call fake news. Even if they're not fake news, they just prioritize establishment outlets above all else. We know the YouTube algorithms are massively biased against independent uh, media outlets. And of course, there's the demonetization crisis, which never ended. So it it's on us. We have to find a way to try to get it done, man. I think the, the primary is June 5th, so it's coming up very soon. You got to get out there and vote for Allison Hartson. I mean, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm jealous of people who have the, the option to, to vote for one of these awesome candidates. But in case you were unclear about Obama and his final legacy, well, now he's screaming it through a megaphone from the tallest mountaintop.